Hey, what's up everyone, Aaron here. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about altcoins and do I own altcoins and will I be buying them more and more leading up to the Bitcoin halving next year. I'm gonna talk about historically what happens after a Bitcoin halving, what the Ethereum price does, and then what the rest of the altcoin market does. I'm gonna talk about selling altcoins. So what do you do when you're up 50, 100% or when you've done a 10X on your coin? What do you do? How do you progressively sell and get out of these positions? Or do you not want to sell? So I'll talk about that as well. But first, Celsius Network. So we are still in the waiting game regarding if the SEC is going to approve this new co. There are rumors floating around, and they are literally just that, rumors that possibly we may have to toggle to the orderly wind down, which would give us more upfront crypto and we would not get this new co stock. We would still get some equity, I believe, in the mining. But I will let you know if that happens right now. Again, we are just still waiting. Whether the new code gets approved or we go to the orderly wind down, really, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to get out of this as quickly as possible. So we have a Bitcoin halving coming up next year around April or May. So what happened in the last cycle is that Bitcoin broke its previous all time high six months after the halving. So that would put it at around the end of 2024. And then after Bitcoin and Ethereum break their previous all time high, then it is off to the races. You see Bitcoin, Ethereum and altcoins just rip up and we have this massive altcoin rally. So this is a chart right here from Ben's website into the cryptoverse. I do have a link below if you do want to pick this up with a discount. You can see right here at the end of 2021, this is where we saw basically the peak of the last bull market. And you can see here Ethereum had its highest dominance since all the way back to 2017. So there's a lot of talk about when will the Bitcoin dominance come down, which usually means that Ethereum's price is going up or the dominance of Ethereum in the marketplace is going up. And when Ethereum goes up in dominance, the altcoins seem to follow. And you can see right here that when Ethereum was at its highest dominance, the Bitcoin dominance in this red line right here was pretty low. So end of 2020, the Bitcoin dominance was around 70%. And it dropped to around, you know, a 40% mark or so. So I'm starting out with these charts just to give you an idea that when the Bitcoin dominance goes down, Ethereum goes up, all coins go up as well. And if this looks like the previous cycle, which I believe it will, then we will see the Ethereum dominance go up and altcoins rip as well. And take a look at CoinGecko today. That's exactly what we saw. So we saw that there were some massive wins for today. The entire market is up 5%. And a lot of this is coming on the heels of hopefully some ETF announcement. But there is just a lot of money on the sidelines right now that wants to come into crypto, also equities. But just talking about crypto, there's a lot of money that is going to be flowing in here. So I see the dips that we will be seeing as accumulation points for altcoins over the next couple months. Now, if you want to be a 100% Bitcoin maxi, you can totally do that. Because if Bitcoin is going to hit a million dollars, you really don't need that much Bitcoin to really make a bunch of money. If Ethereum is going to maybe hit $100,000 and do a 50x, then that's insane, right? That's an insane return. And a lot of people believe that Bitcoin is going to hit a million and Ethereum to 100,000. I don't know. Nobody can predict that, obviously. But if you have a lot of conviction in one specific coin or protocol or project, then I'm not here to tell you to diversify and to do other things. But we also know that a lot of altcoins literally don't make it over the next four years. So I started buying Bitcoin, or I should say I bought my first Bitcoin, I think in 2013. I ended up selling it for a loss, but that's because I did not know what I was holding. But most of the coins in 2013 and 2017 do not exist today, or they are just so small and they are basically dead projects. So I made a Twitter thread on this a few days ago talking about what I wish I knew in 2013. And one that I want to talk about now is how to convert your altcoin gains into Bitcoin or stablecoins. So on Ben's website, there is this cool page about how to exit based on the risk bands of a specific altcoin. So you can pick your altcoin here. He doesn't have all of them, but he certainly has a lot. You can go to Solana, which a lot of people are very bullish on. And depending on how risky it is, you can sell a certain amount of that altcoin. So these are how many days Solana has spent in each of these different risk bands. So right here, if I click 0.9 to 1, you can see that there was just a couple times in Solana's history where it was at the peak risk band. And these would have been all great times to sell, especially up here. 
here. So Ben breaks it down basically how conservative you are to how much of a YOLO trader you are and if you want to begin selling at certain risk bands. So basically you could sell a little bit when Solana hits certain risk bands, which he shows on the site. So for example, here for Solana, a 0.4 to 0.5 would be around $41 to $65. 0.5 to 0.6 would be between $65 and $103 per Solana. So as the price of Sol goes up, you can be taking more and more profits. So this is just one way to look into selling altcoins or phasing out of your altcoin positions. For myself though, personally, I will be most likely relying on this. So trading against my animal instincts. And they had the example of 2017, there were sitcom episodes that were all about Bitcoin. I believe the Big Bang Theory in 2017 had an entire episode on Bitcoin. And when there's that kind of social validation, that everybody's talking about Bitcoin or name your crypto. Maybe it'll be Solana this cycle. I really don't know. That is usually a great time to begin selling because when the mainstream media talks about it, it is time to get out because that is when the hordes are coming in. And I hate to say it, but when the majority, when the average person comes in to start buying, is usually when it's time to start selling. There are some people that say, well, we're not in a zero interest rate environment right now. Potentially, the entire global market will be in a recession. And if that's the case, then the having will not perform like it has in the past, or the market will not perform the four year cycle. And I want to play this clip from Chamath Polyhapatia over at the All In podcast. This is from last week. So, Chamath, very, very smart guy. And he does not think that we are going to go into a recession. You're going to be in a really tough spot in the general because the economy is also going to be in reasonable shape. All the predictions, all the predictive markets show that we're going to be in a reasonable place. When you look at this M2 money supply, look how much it's actually shrunk. Now, why that's interesting to me is that you have these two forces that are opposing each other. One is we have these huge deficits. So we're technically still frankly, issuing a lot of money, right? But then on the other side, we, we have QT. So when debt rolls off, we're not reissuing it. And the balance of that is still a really constructive thing where now you can see that you know M2 has materially started to shrink. And I think that that's a really positive thing because now what that does, it, it combats inflation in a good way. Unfortunately for all of us, it hurts financial assets, which is not so good. I think we've all felt that pain, but the reality is that that's been working. What you see now is like, we are in a really decent place with inflation. And if you think about what's going to happen over the next six months, it's mostly in the bag. And meaning, we talked about this before, but there's a lag effect on a handful of components, specifically rents, which when you roll them into this inflation rate, you're going to see it really, really turn over very quickly. We know that inflation is falling. It's going to fall even more. You can see that now validated in these 10 year break evens. And what you see here is the 10 year break evens are also telling us, okay, guys, we're going to be in a pretty decent place. And so I think the setup is basically the following there's less money in the system. That's a positive. There's more money on the sidelines. And this is just a picture of, I mean, look at the amount of money in money market funds, six trillion and growing. That's a really positive sign, which is that money will need to find a home. So I just wanted to play a couple of those clips. I have included the uh, link to this podcast at when Chamath starts to talk about the economy below if you wanted to check it out. So a couple of reasons I played that for you guys. The first, I believe that next year's having will produce similar results as the previous having back in 2020 because we are not going to be in a massive recession. Now, could we all be wrong? Of course. But if we're not in a recession and the market is performing well, then I believe that the price of Bitcoin will go up and then Ethereum will follow and altcoins will follow. Chamath also did mention that there's a lot of money on the sidelines that need to be invested. So if there is a Bitcoin ETF or even a spot Ethereum ETF, there will be a ton of institutional money coming in because they need to allocate, they need to put money, these money managers, they have a lot of money and they need to invest it. They can't just keep it in cash. Now, a lot of you are like, well, what altcoins should I buy? Well, I am not in the game of telling you what to buy. I can tell you what I own and just scrolling down the list, I have Solana, I have ADA, I have Doge, I have some, I actually have a lot of Matic, 
Chainlink Avalanche dot. Mostly, though, I am in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and that is just for my personal risk tolerance. I do still hold a lot of Crow because I really hope that the reward program on their debit card comes back. That was amazing. So I am very, very hopeful for Crow. I've been talking about them for many years since like 2020 or 2019. So I'm still a big bull for them as well. And I do hold other altcoins as well. I do hold some gaming coins. I do hold some DeFi tokens, which may or may not ever come back to where they were back in 2021. So I will be talking more about altcoins in the future. If you have one that you really like, you could begin to DCA and take a position in these altcoins, especially if we see pullbacks. So my guess is that we are going to see days where we go negative 5, negative 10%. That would actually be a healthy market right now. We don't want to see this rip up to $60,000 without any pullbacks. I would like to see some pullbacks. So if there are some pullbacks, those would be times when you can pick up some altcoins if you want to. Again, you don't need to. Bitcoin is amazing all on its own. Ethereum can perform extremely well. You don't necessarily need to get into the other altcoins unless you want to, unless you have a knowledge of them, unless you really know what you're holding. And I'll finish the video right here with one of the things I said, separate your short-term trades from, I should have said from, long-term holds. So if you believe that Bitcoin's going to hit a million bucks or Ethereum's going to hit $100,000, then maybe you never want to sell until they hit these benchmarks. And if you have that conviction, then you need to make sure that you do not sell things that you believe are going to go insanely high. I mean, that's really up to you. But if you take an altcoin position that does a 20x, it may be a good time to take some profits. So guys, I'll talk a lot more about this in the future. Again, with Celsius, we are still waiting to see what happens with the SEC, whether the new code goes through or we toggle to the orderly wind down which will give us more upfront crypto, but we don't get the Nuco equity. So there are some trade-offs there, to be honest. And at this point, I don't really care. I just want to get out of this and get a move on, get people's crypto back. And I will leave the link to Ben's website into the Cryptoverse below, where you're going to get 10% if you want to use my code. So until next time, guys, talk with you soon and bye for now.